Here's an example of shifting, rescaling, and using z-scores, um, which is one of the most common ways to shift and rescale data. Uh, what I've got loaded on the calculator here is a, in L1, is a list of uh, salary data for a hypothetical company. And they're in the tens of thousands. And there are, let me see, how many of them are there? There are uh, 33 employees. And we can get a sense of what that distribution is, of course, if we go to Statplot. I've already got it set up for histogram and L1. And um, I could do a zoom 9. I usually tend to think that they don't do quite enough bins for the histograms there. So let's look. Um, let's make these numbers simple. Let's say go from 20,000, instead of 28,700, which is the minimum, to 100,000, which is a little bit more than the maximum. And let's do, let's say make the bin width a little bit smaller. Um, I like to have a few more bins, as long as the, the, there's not too many bins, as long as each bin has a decent number in them. Okay. And notice the Y scale here is 1. And so we can read off from the dots up here. There's maybe 10 things in this middle bin, and 8, 9, 10. There's, looks like there's a couple bins with 1. Okay. So this is not the world's most symmetric distribution. It's definitely unimodal. It's not the world's most symmetric distribution. So I, I wouldn't be super confident saying that this is, um, corresponds to a normal model. So we couldn't make all the conclusions based on a normal model here. But we could at least do part of the, the story in the chapter on normal models, which is shifting and rescaling it. And in particular, um, if I'm a new person to this company and I make, let's say, uh, $72,000, how do I compare? Is $72,000 a good figure for this company? It really depends on what I do, what, I'm, what company it is. If this is, um, you know, flipping burgers at McDonald's, I think that's pretty good. If this is, uh, if I'm a neurosurgeon, that's probably not so good. So I want a standardized way of saying, how do I compare? And that's what shifting and rescaling does. So we want to shift this uh, so that we have a standardized way of comparing things. I'd like s the mean. If I get an average score, or, and if this is an average salary, I'd like the mean to register zero, not above and below. So we're going to compare to the mean. And so that's going to involve a shift. We're going to take everything, and we're going to subtract the mean. And then I'd like to, I need to know something about the width. Just shifting isn't enough. Because say the mean was 50,000. If all the salaries were between 49,000 and 51,000, this would be a, a still a surprisingly good salary. If the salaries are between 20,000 and 100,000, this isn't so surprising. Okay? And so what we do is we need some sort of standard ruler of the width, some measure of spread. And we'd like to rescale so that the, that becomes 1. And so we're going to measure in units of some standard ruler. There's different choices for that. But the standard deviation is a very common one. And it's very good if you are somewhat close to a normal model. And in particular, if you're really accurately measured by a normal model. OK, so the shifting is I'm going to subtract the mean. And so I've got to figure that out. And then I'm going to rescale by dividing by the standard deviation. OK, and so let's do that. Let's go ahead and go to stat calc one var stats on L1. OK, and then let's, I need the eraser here. Um, let's go ahead and write that down. So the mean x bar is 56,227, $56,000. And then sx, the standard deviation, is 15016. Oh, I'd say 15017. About $15,000. Okay. Now these are as measured by um, by looking at the data. And there's a subtle issue that we'll we'll come to um, you know more and more about the difference between some statistic that's measured from the data and something that's predicted from a model. Okay. But we can definitely take these and use it to re to shift and rescale the data. So what we can do is I'll just go to, I'll take L1, that's the list of salaries, oh, and let me insert a parenthesis here. We're going to take L1 and we're going to subtract the mean. 
that's going to do the shift. So that's going to say, for every salary, let's compare it to the mean salary. And then we're going to divide that by the standard deviation. And so this is the formula that you, we have in the book, y minus. Now they use the mu and the sigma, because those would be predicted from the model. We're doing something a little bit different, which is we're actually getting them out of the data. And the book's calling it SX, which is a little bit of a weird um, notation, but that's OK. OK. And that's going to be the z-score OK, for us. So this is a little bit a little bit different because it's coming using this experimental data. The, the OK, and now I'm just going to store that. Let's store that in L2. OK. And now let's go ahead and um, graph those values. So let's go to stat plot. Let's turn this one off. Actually, no, let's just leave it on. And let's just change it to L2. OK, why am I not getting anything? Because I haven't changed the window. So I can try zoom 9, but I know I'm going to have to fix it. Eh, it's still those really that kind of chunky look. OK, and now the numbers I'm expecting totally different. The Z scores are not going to be in the thousands. They're going to be things that are usually single digit numbers. Here it's going from minus 1.8 to 2.7. Because all the data is between about minus 2 and plus 3 standard deviations. Um, so let's just make them simple. Minus 2 to 3, and let's say 0.5. It's a little smaller bin size and should be, yeah, there we go. OK. So it doesn't look exactly like what we had before, because histograms, especially with a small number of data points, can be pretty sensitive to the bin size. You get these funky gaps coming up sometimes. Um, but you still see it's m basically unimodal, all this bit of a striking little little mode. So maybe that's suggesting, ooh, this is even maybe a little further from normal than we thought. Um, but here's the, the spread of all the, the data values. Now, what was that question? We had $72,000. What's the z-score for that? OK. So let's go ahead and, ooh, I shouldn't have erased that. OK, so if y is $72,000, then let's just do the z-score by hand. 72,000 minus, now what was the one of our stats? OK, it was 56,227 divided by, and then we're divided by 15,017. OK, so let's do that. Um, seventy-two thousand dollars minus five six two two seven. Oh, I forgot the parentheses, so I'll just divide it now. Divided by one five zero one seven. Z score one point oh five. Okay, so we're about one. Sta that salary would be about one standard deviation above the mean. That for almost any kind of of uh, histogram, almost any kind of data, that's significantly above the mean, but not surprisingly above the mean. For a normal model, we have results like the 68% the rule. Um, but for other models, we can't count on those kinds of numbers exactly. But this is definitely, I'd say it's significantly, but not uh, amazingly, let's say. above average. So we'd probably be pretty happy to find that our salary rate was in that range, but we wouldn't have think, oh my gosh, well, I'm almost the most highly paid employee in the company.